Uh, good morning, Vinny and Melissa. Yeah, a very violent night on Milwaukee streets. This one here just happened just a few hours ago. Police are looking for the suspects in three separate shootings. You can see uh, detectives here uh, talking and briefing uh, their officers. This is on North 34th Street. If we take a walk down here, you can see that they have been focused on this front lawn of this home and on the street, you can see evidence markers heavy, thick, dark smoke. You see a police officer standing here. Uh, fire crew still working on this fire when it started just after nine this morning. Yeah, the snow here is heavy and thick. You can see all, how it's coming down. We're learning more about a hit and run crash that put a Milwaukee police officer in the hospital. We're told Officer Frank Vertoshnik had surgery Friday. We are at uh, Underwood in Harmony by Fire Station 1. Right here you see the uh, sheriff's squad car. There is an armed sheriff's deputy on the other side. I'm told that it'll be at least a couple more hours before 12th and Highland is cleared. That's because, take a look at this, you see the uh, squad car there turned upside down. Well, a family struggling to overcome a terrible tragedy gets the holiday gift it never expected. Andy Scholl shares this heartwarming story from Waukesha County. This happened just before 2 this morning. The car went into the water off the launch. Police won't talk about the specifics of what happened, but we do know a woman was hit at Farwell and North. This is Jerry Sinowitz. He is asking for better wages for employees for Walmart, also wanting better health benefits. Heartbreak this morning surrounding a fatal train crash. 44-year-old Mike Dragon died when an Amtrak train smashed into his truck Thursday night in Jefferson County. Keller Russell spoke with people who knew him. Well, Shelly and Charles, Christmas mass no doubt is a highlight for many parishioners here. So when they arrived here early this morning, they saw this note that it had been canceled. But I can feel it already. I think I'm an old man, so I feel it in my bones. <laughs> it's approaching. You can feel that low pressure <laughs> moving on in. Hey, then you were t trying to teach me earlier, right? Yep. It's like one. Just take one flip. Right one there. flip. All right. One flip. See, you got it. See? Perfect. All right, now Good let's job. try it with two. Can we do it with two, you think? Yes, absolutely. All right, let me uh, give you the mic here. I know you're mic'd already, but let okay. me give you the mic. All right. All right, one, two, one. There we go. Two, three. There it is. There it is. We got that one. <laughs> Neighbors tell me what happened here at this home is certainly bizarre. In fact, there's even crime tape up here. They're still trying to understand how this all unfolded. She was coming on here to have a cigarette. The other girl followed her and just gave her a good push over. Dennis Hunt can't believe a woman he met at a bar pushed his friend off his second story porch. She fell nearly 15 feet. He claims he doesn't know why the suspect did it. Did they have any arguments or did nope, they say no, anything? Nope, no argument, no none. But police say there was some sort of argument before the suspect pushed her. The fall left Hunt's friend with serious injuries. She was taken to a hospital in Green Bay. Her mouth is there, her back is busted, a whole bunch of busted bones. Hunt claims a woman who pushed his friend was hiding around the corner and naked. This YouTube video shows her arrest. Police say she was drinking. And the other girl told me, to just leave her. Don't say nothing, don't call the cops, no nothing. I said, I'm calling the cops. You're getting out of here. While Hunt was helping his friend, the woman ran off and down the street, scaring neighbors. We saw the naked lady and she was just like running and she was like, there's somebody being killed over there. America Torres also called police wondering what was going on across the street. Like The whole block came out because it's crazy to see how there's a naked lady running around with their kids. Now that woman is expected to be charged with reckless injury. In Sheboygan, Nick Montez, today's TMJ4. The homeowner is frustrated that the homeless are using this alleyway as her personal bathroom, and she wants something done about it. I go out my garage, all you smell is urine. It just takes your breath away. That smell this homeowner is talking about so foul that she gave us a call looking for help. She's asked us not to show her face. Go into the bathroom between my house or wherever they can find a spot. You know, and they don't care where they go. She lives near St. Vincent de Paul where they feed the homeless. It's open for about two hours in the evening. After they eat, they have nowhere to go. You know, they sleep on the porches and they have no bathrooms. We found human waste in the alley behind her home, even on Greenfield Avenue, a busy street where kids wait for the school bus. And this jacket, it's actually become a toilet. I chased the guy away while I had to go to my office, get my guys out, and he pooped on the porch. 
We went to St. Vincent de Paul to get some answers, but no one was there. Both Metro Clean and the homeowner have asked the city and police to do something about the problem. We've reached out and we've increased patrols. I've been through the alley personally. But Alderman Jose Perez says there is one big problem. It's a matter of actually catching someone in the act. And um, so, so we're, we're concerned about it. If they even put a toilet there, I'd be happy. On your side in Milwaukee Southside, Nick Montez, today's TMJ4. Dakota most likely would have been sitting on his perch where he sits every night. But Dakota is gone tonight, his perch empty. Everything is locked up at night. They took a pipe in here, pried it open and opened up the cage. Dakota's handler says thieves had to work hard to get in. She's devastated. We've lost a member of our family. I've lost a colleague that I've worked with for 10 years. The 11 year old great horned owl has lived in captivity nearly all his life, an ambassador for the center and used in education programs. He doesn't have the capability to survive on his own. The thieves also broke into two other cages, one with a turkey found wandering around until the center opened this morning, the other an empty cage. As we looked around to see what was going on, what other damage was done, we noticed the hole in the roof. All they can assume someone walked on top and it collapsed. They just hope someone will return Dakota. It would almost be easier to think that Dakota was out flying free than to know he's been captured. Why my baby? <laughs> he was only 10. Yolanda Cash is trying to make sense of why her son Thailand was taken so sudden. I'm just hurt. I'm just angry with God. Yolanda says Thailand's older brother found him in the upstairs living room Saturday night. He said, there's something on, around his neck and um, there's blood. I said, huh? He said, there's blood. Yolanda quickly ran upstairs only to find Tylen slumped over with a curtain around his neck. I tried to pull it from around his neck and it was, it was just, it was, I couldn't pull it. I just shaked the whole curtain down. Images of her son she now can't get out of her mind. Blood coming from his mouth and he was foaming and he was vomiting, and, but he never came to. Milwaukee police told TMJ4 early Sunday morning the 10-year-old committed suicide. But Tylen's dad thinks otherwise. Oh, it wasn't a suicide because he was just too happy. He had no reason to commit suicide. Enzi Curtis believes it's a tragic accident. I think it was just a game he was playing and it got out of hand with just him by himself. Tylen's parents say he's played the choking game before and they warned him. And I told him, I said, honey, that's dangerous. You shouldn't do that. But Tylen's parents say he always lived in the moment. He loved going to school at Hope Christian School Prima and asked questions about God. Yolanda does find some peace in that thought, but she still wants answers. I still want to know why. I still want to know exactly what happened. Doors opened even earlier. You can see from this target, the parking lot is full. Many looking to grab those door busters and a good deal in time for Christmas. The holiday shopping frenzy is on. I just got my iPad. I'm just so excited. <laughs> Stores offering big ticket items at huge discounted prices. Enough for anyone to say, ho, ho, ho. Angelina Vo taking advantage of Black Friday deals at Target. Is it safe to say you're almost done Christmas shopping? I have one more item for each of them and then we're done. Tom Marchese hit Kohl's early Friday. Well, mostly for the grandkids toys, clothes. At Mayfair Mall, a sea of shopping bags in the hands of many who also started early. Some walked into the mall at midnight to save some big bucks. 50 percent mostly at every store, so a lot of money. And the mall is keeping shoppers here. You can either get a mini makeover or over here you have a back massage. How does it feel, ma'am? Feeling really good. Enough to recharge Laura Larravee. I've been out since 8 o'clock last night, went home for a couple hours of sleep and came back out. She's the reason why stores love doing Black Friday. It's, it's a good day. It's a critical day. It doesn't make or break the entire season. And even though many retailers said they've had a good year, they're just hoping that Black Friday can make it even better. On your side in Wapatosa, Nick Montez, today's TMJ4.